Good to have all of you here this morning. It's, uh, you know, what I always try to, try to encourage you guys to, you know, when it gets cold like this, it's, we should huddle together more, but, uh, um, and, and, get, and stay closer together, but uh, I'm not going to make you move or anything like that, because your seats are probably warm where you are now, right? Um, but this morning we're going to continue in, that, in, in what we've been looking at, um, the heroes really of the of our faith, and basically when we look at, I guess I shouldn't turn it down, right? Yeah, there it is. I turned the mic towards the, the monitor, so. But, uh, you know, we, it, we're gonna, as we continue the first couple of weeks, we looked at uh, a couple of uh, people in Genesis. This week we're going to 1 Samuel chapter 17, and I, I know that you're probably familiar with a man named David. He was a king, and uh, this morning I want to tell you that we'll talk about him to help back. He was a, really a godly man. I want to introduce you to a, a man that I really I admire in the Word of God. A reader, Reader's Digest even had described him in this way. He was a shepherd, warrior, outlaw, faithful friend, emperor, uh, empire builder, sinner, saint, uh, failed father, ideal king. Who in the Bible but David appears in so many roles? His name occurs more than 1,000 times in the Old and New Testament, more than any other. He, is a prominent, he has a prominent place not only in the political and military history of his people, but also in theological poetry of even in their hopes, and, and even in their hopes for the future. David is quite, a, quite a, an interesting character in Scripture. If you look at the, the book of Psalms, he has written many of the Psalms that we have in, in the Bible. And I find him really kind of an interesting man. Um, uh, in in the Scripture, he's described in this manner. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, it says, The Lord has found a man loyal to him. The Lord has anointed, appointed him a ruler over his people, because you have not done what the Lord uh, Lord commanded. The, so in other words, uh, God found this man a very loyal man. He was a very godly man. Um, we also know in Scripture that he's often called the, the man after God's own heart. In Acts chapter 13, verse 22, it says, After removing him, he raised up David as their king. And, and referring back to Saul, when he removed Saul from the, from the throne of Israel. He raised up David as their king and testified about him. I found David, the son of Jesse, a man loyal to me who will carry out my will. So this is the kind of man that we're looking at, the kind of man that we're talking about this morning, a man that, that was willing to follow God, will, willing to, to go and do and ask God has commanded him. I know that, uh, I, know any of the, I know many of the stories that, as you do, about David, and he was not necessarily a perfect man, right? Because we know the story of Bathsheba. And time for a time he failed, he sinned, and he didn't, and uh, sin didn't leave him untouched. So sometimes, you know, even godly men, even men that uh, are after God's own heart, have times that they have failings. But what we do find is a man that strives to follow God, and has become known as a man, as I said, after God's own heart. He is a man that I would call a godly man, and we see that no better uh, story, a better example of this in the story. Uh, in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, where we see the story of David and Goliath. How many of you know the story of David and Goliath? A few do, right? You know, it's interesting. I thought this one of the reasons that I want to go through some of these stories is because I'm, I'm surprised how many don't really know the, story, the stories. And uh, David and Goliath is one of the classics of the Scripture, and it, and it has a lot to teach us about following after God. So before we get started in that, in that chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 17, let's begin with the word of prayer. We ask God to guide us this morning. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this opportunity we have to be in your house this morning. Thank you for the opportunity we've had to worship the, up to this point and as we continue to worship through the study of your word. Father, I pray that our hearts would be open to your message, that your Holy Spirit anoints me as I speak and that the Holy Spirit would anoint each person as they hear that they would, our hearts would be open to the message, that we follow uh, what we hear and uh, that we take it to heart and to uh, apply it to our lives. Now, Lord, just be with us, guide us, uh, teach us, and we pray for these things in your Son's precious name. Amen. Well, as we look at this passage of Scripture, we find an interesting thing, and in, in, in some ways it's a lot similar to the idea of, you know, we the big thing about today that we hear about is bullying often, right? And how there's bullies. But like, anybody don't realize, I don't know if you realize this, but, um, or maybe you do realize this, but uh, there's bullies everywhere, isn't there? There's bullies within school, and then when you go to work, and you work in the, and even uh, as adults, you'll find
find there's even bullies still at the workplace. People that want to make you feel like you're not important or, or give you a hard time. You know, this, in this story, we sort of see a little bit of a bullying situation. And the first, in first, uh, the first 11 verses of this chapter, what I want to see, though, is you to see is first is that there's a God-sized challenge in this, in this section of Scripture. And if we read there in chapter, uh, chapter 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning in verse 1, it says, The Philistines gathered their forces for war in Saul, in Judah, and camped between Saul and, and Azah, uh, Azekah, in, boy, I love, I love the Old Testament, because they have all these great names. And uh, I'm going to verse 2, it says, Saul and the, and the men of Israel gathered and camped in the valley of El Elah. Then they lined up and battled in battle formation to face the Philistines. The Philistines were standing on one hill, and the Israelites were standing on, on another hill, and with, a, with a, a, rain, uh, a ravine between them. Then a champion named Goliath from Gath came out from the Philistine camp. Listen to this. He was nine feet, nine inches tall. So I'm guessing, probably, I'm about... I'm around five foot nine, so if we can add, I don't know if this adds four feet. I think it's maybe about a three foot riser on this stage. So add another foot, and that's how tall he was. So, so you have this this guy that's nine foot nine inches tall. So, Madeline, I want you to come here for a second. Just stand up here with me for a second down here. David was a youth, and uh, so it's like this. Add another foot. And this is what we're like, eh? Can you imagine the, the, the difference? Can you, can, you see, can you imagine this guy coming out from the people of, uh, from, the, from the Philistine army, this huge giant of a guy. The other day, I, we were at the Butter Dome um, for uh, um, Remembrance Day. And this guy was in the, this, this guy that played the bass drum for the Empton City Police Band was a monster. Like, I, I couldn't believe how tall he was. And they wear these, the, these Busby hats, right? You know, the tall, the tall bearskin type hats, the ones that are all furry looking and, and, and that. So he, uh, you see this guy, and he's just this, he's a monster. He's head and shoulders over every man in the van. And I, when I think about this guy, nine foot nine inches tall, he, that guy would even feel small to this guy. So here we have this guy, he's come out nine foot nine inches tall. And then we go on, it says, and he wore a bronze helmet and bronze scale armor and that weighed 125 pounds. Now, that's more than some of you weigh, right? It's, uh, I know that, that some of you probably, it's, 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 it's amazing to think that this guy weighing, wearing what some of your, your weight, right, in armor. That, to me, that's just amazing. There was a bronze, bronze armor on his, on his shins and bronze, a bronze sword that slung between his shoulders. His spear shaft was like a, weaver, weave, a weaver's beam, and the iron point of his spear weighed 15 pounds. So the spear end of itself, the point of the spear, you know, the pointy end, weighed 15 pounds itself. So this is what this guy is carrying around. In addition, a shield bearer was walking in front of him. So in, the only thing he didn't carry was a, sh a shield for himself. He stood and shouted to the Israelites uh, battle formation, why do you come out and line to line up in battle formation, he asked them. Am I not a Philistine? Are, and are not and are you not servants of Saul? Choose one of your men and have him come down against me. If he wins in the fight against me and kills me, we will be your servants. But I, but if I win against him and kill him, you will be our servants and serve us. Then the Philistine said, or Philistines, the Philistines said, yeah, I defy the ranks of Israel today. Send me a man so I can fight each other, so we can fight each other. When Saul and all the Israelites heard, the, heard these words from the Philistines, they lost their courage and were terrified. Now, can you, can you understand the situation, right? Can you imagine that here's this big bully comes out uh, into the schoolyard and uh, as often in elementary school you've got all these, it's always the big huge guy that's the bully, right? Ever remember experiencing that? It's a guy that always has something to say, always has always negative, always say, has something mean to say. I remember there was a guy in junior high school 
He was about uh, a foot and a half taller than I was. And now from junior high school, I was about five foot five, five foot six tall. Maybe I pushed five foot seven. Because when I met Ardell in, when I was in grade 11, I think I was in grade 11, grade 10, 11, I was still shorter than Ardell. So when Ardell is, stands up and she's about five foot eight, um, I, I was shorter than her when we got married, actually. I grew after I got married. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of bizarre, right? Eh? I grew when I, was, when I got to that 20, when I was in my 20s, I still was growing. I was a late bloomer, always have been. So, but uh, anyhow, um, the, if you go into our hallway in, the, in, the, in, our, in our house, there's a picture of Ardell and I, and it's our wedding, a wedding picture, and it's a beautiful picture. It's the sun is coming through from the back, and it's shining off behind us. And uh, I look taller than her, but the only reason I look taller than her than that picture is that I was standing on a little bit of a hill. So that I would look, I wouldn't look like a little shrimp. But anyways, so but the, I remember this guy in junior high school. He was always in my face, push, 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 push. It was like he always had something nasty to say to me. And always had just miserable, right? He was a god size uh, challenge. He's always, he always was just pushing. He's always in my face. He's always trying to, to badger me. Always trying to make me feel miserable and feel little. And I'll tell you in a little while what, it, what I had to do eventually to take care of that. But uh, it's a God-sized challenge. And God places these challenges in our lives that are huge. They're monstrous. They they're, they're, look impossible. I just began reading a book about uh, this man who actually becomes David's bodyguard. His name is Benaiah. In, in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23, you can read about him. And he he's a guy that that is not afraid of God-sized challenges. In fact, he's a, he, it tells us in, in, verse, uh, in well, verse 17 or so of that chapter, talks about how he was willing to, to fight two mighty men from, from Moab, and he was able to defeat them. And then we see in, in the same verse that he was also a man that was not afraid to, to, to face a challenge based on, because he was also a man that was willing to chase a lion into a pit and kill him. And I was just talking to Stephen and, and uh, Mason the other day, yesterday, and we were talking about this guy, and that he would, his story is just amazing to me. Because if you think about it, what's a lion to us? The average man is probably about two or three hundred pounds lighter than a, than, than a full-grown uh, male lion. And a male lion can probably run about two times as fast as we can, or more. And a, a lion can leap um, 30 feet at a time, yet... This man, Benaiah, was willing to chase this lion into, the, into a pit. Not only on any, any pit, but on any day. It was a day that was a snowy day. And to, for the Bible to, to mention that in Israel, it had to be kind of a special kind of thing. Because you know that Israel doesn't get a lot of snow. It only snows there on a rare occasion. And even still today, you get a rarely get snow in, in Israel. But he was willing to chase this lion into this pit and to face this challenge, face this oper take this opportunity to be able, to, to, be able to, to move forward in his life. David and or the people of Israel, Saul and all the, these mighty men of Israel, have come out to battle. They're standing on, this, on the, the one side of this valley, and they're there, and they're lying in the valley, and uh, they're in battle formation. They're ready to fight. And here comes out this big man, this 9 foot 9 inch giant, this 9 foot 9 inch monster of a man, who's, who comes out and challenges him, and then they, and what do they do? They shrink away. Has God put a challenge in your life? Has God placed something in your life that you're going, oh, I don't know. And, do, and are, are you shrinking away? Or are you just going, maybe I can do this. You see, in this section of Scripture, the people of Israel had this challenge set before them. They had come out to battle. They come out to do what they need to do, and yet they stand up and they're, they're, they shrink away. They lose, lose curve, their courage and were terrified. Every single man of Israel, every single soldier of the, of the people of Israel was not willing, was, was afraid. They lost their courage. They lost their, they, and, they, and were terrified. So we go on though. And we see first we have this God-sized challenge. We need to have this God-sized faith. We be in verse 12. And going down to verse 37. And we, in, in this section of Scripture, we see that, I'm not going to I'll read the whole thing to you because that's a long section of Scripture, but as you go through that section of Scripture, what happens is that we, we go, the story pans back to David's family. 
And David and his, and his brothers had gone are among these men that are on, lined up for battle. These mighty men of Israel. So David's family, David though, is back home. His, he's left at home. He's the youngest of the boys. And he um, is given the task of going out and caring for the sheep of, his, 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 of their family. He's a shepherd. And, he, and so he's, you know, he's, they don't think he's good enough. He's too big. He's not, he's not big enough. He's too little. He's too young. He's just a young, a young man, maybe a teenage boy. And he's not really ready to be able to, to go to war yet. But his dad, though, has, has a task for him to do. He calls him back into the fields. And he says to David, David, I want you to take food and take supplies. And I want you to go to the battle lines. And I want you to go check in and see how your brothers are doing. And so he, he gets, he says, he, 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 he's a good boy. He listens to his dad. He gets prepared. He gets all his, his food together. He, has, he, he arranges someone to, for someone, to, one of the servants to care for the sheep. And he goes out and he, sends, and he, and he goes out to stand um, with the people of Israel. Or go to see what, how his brothers are doing. And he, and he arrives at the, at the perimeter of the camp, and the, the army was, and, and, uh, was out to go and see what's happening, and he hears this all going on. And you know, it's interesting that he, he's, not a, he, he's kind of intrigued by what's going on, and um, he's, not, uh, he's willing to go and do what he needs to do. Now, it's interesting that David uh, is not afraid of this, that has no fear, it seems like. Um, and we'll go and we'll pick up in verse 25 here. It says, Previously an Israelite man declared, Do you see this man who keeps coming out? He, keep, he comes and defies Israel. The king will make uh, um, the man who kills him the very rich and give him uh, his daughters. And the king will also make the household of that man's father uh, exempt from paying taxes in Israel. David spoke to the, to the men who were standing with him. What will be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes it? The disgrace from, from Israel. Just who is this uncircumcised Philistine who should who defy the armies of the, of the living God? You see, David understood. This is one of Alexander's favorite verses. He always he gets a little grin on his face when he sees this. Can you imagine him standing up and saying, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this guy that is willing to you know? He, just, he, he, saw, he sees him over there. And you know, when you think about it, you look across the ravine, this guy still looks like a giant. It still looks like a monster of a man, but David sees him and says, Who is this Philistine that is, who stands before us and, and defies who? Not the people of Israel. He doesn't say he defies, the, defies us, who, 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 who mocks us. No, he says, Who is who should defy the armies of the living God? He's talking about who's, who's going to will, who's this guy, who even, even as big as he is, is willing to stand up against who are coming before the people of, 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 of the true God. People told him, though, in verse 27, about the awful offender, concluding that this is, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. He really tells him about that. David's oldest brother, Eliab, Elab, listens as, as he spoke uh, to the man and became angry with him. Now his brother's not happy. He's one of his older brothers, and you know how older brothers can be sometimes. Why did you come down here, he asked. Who did you leave with those few sheep with in, in the wilderness? I know you're your arrogance and your evil heart, you came down to see the battle. What have I done now? Protested David. Verse 29. It was, it was just a question. This is, sounds like a little brother, right? I'm just asking. him. What do you give me star time for? Then he turned from those, uh, from those beside him to, to others in front of him and asked about the offer. The people gave him the answer, uh, the same answer as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, so, so he had David brought to him. David said to Saul, don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your, your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So here's this youth. We have all these grown men, all these guys who are their mighty, these mighty men of war. They have their armor. They have their, their bows, their arrows. They have their spears. They have all they need to fight this great uh, arm, this great uh, army across from this great man across from them. But uh, David comes, who's a youth, and they're, but these guys are all afraid. But this youth comes and says, I'll take care of it. I'll fight. But Saul replied, you can't go and fight this Philistine. You're just a youth. And he's been a warrior since he was young. David said, answered Saul, your servant has been tending his father's sheep. Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off the lamb, carried off the lamb from the flock. I went 
after it and struck it down and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If it reared up against me, I would grab it by its fur and strike it down and kill it. Now, you think about that for just a moment. So he's, what, is, what is David saying? He's saying, you know, I, I've gone, you know, I, I've been out in the fields, and if a lion or a bear came, and I just always think of the lion and, uh, lion and bear, I, you know, when I hear that line, I think about uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, lions and bears, and ti the tigers and lions, tigers and bears are lion, right? Remember that? I don't know if maybe you don't have seen that movie in a long time. I, I remember when I seen it as a little boy, and I always, uh, this, when I hear this line in there, it always makes me think of that. But he goes, and he goes out to these, these animals, and he, he actually takes the lamb back out of the, uh, from the mouth of, this, of these animals and, and res rescues them. Now, if, if this lion and bear rears up itself and, and, and is going to fight and, and wants to fight for, the, for its prize, David was willing to take care of it. This boy, maybe Madeline's age, maybe, maybe one of some of you guys' age back there, Daniel, or, or maybe even Brendan's age, I don't know. He's, this, this, I, that's my guess how old Daniel or David is at this point. And he's willing to stand and fight against bears and tigers. And I, and I know myself personally, if I had to fight against a lion or bear, and I, and I, you know, thinking about this, I would be terrified. I don't know you. But this, guy, this young man, he, he was, he's willing to take care of whatever God places before him in, in order to save the sheep. So your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, listen to the word, listen to what he says. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. This is God-sized faith. You know, he is willing to stand up against this giant of a man who's taller than, than me standing on this platform, at least this tall, floor to the, to the to top of my hand, and is willing to stand up against him. Why? Because he believes that God, the God who has saved him this far, the God who has saved him from the lion's paw and the bear's paw, and, to, and, and has been able to take, or to, take, to carry him through this far, will carry him past this huge giant of a man. Now that story I was telling you about this guy, eventually I had to stand up to him. I remember one day, finally getting fed up, I was in the hallway of the gym, I can, re I can remember being there, coming out of the, out of the, out of the locker room, and, he, and there he is again, waiting to just, just get all over my case, and eventually I had to turn to him, and I grabbed him by the shirt and shirt, and I pushed him up against the wall, and I said, you leave me alone, I've had enough. That was crazy. That was stupidity on my behalf, because this guy could have stabbed me like a twig. Now, I'm not saying I had God's eyes faith. I had craziness at the moment for, for that one. But me, interesting enough, the guy left me alone and became my friend. <laughs> but here, this story, David comes, he has this God-sized challenge, this big bully, this big hard thing to do, and he, he says, I can do it. Because I have faith, a God-sized faith, that my God will take care of me. So what we ask the question then, has God given you an opportunity, a task, a challenge? And he has to, he's asking you, will you trust me to carry you through this challenge? Will you trust me to show you the way? Will you trust me to carry you through and make it through? Well, we see how David responds. And we go on and we see God-sized action. So first we have a God-sized challenge, we have God-sized faith. And again, with faith without actions, faith without works, as James tells us in, in, his, in his letter, says is dead. So if you don't have, you don't put words to your, if you, if you just always just talk about your faith and never do anything about it, you're not going to do anything. And it says then, and then in verse 38, then Saul had his own military cloth, clothes put on David. He put on, he put a bronze helmet on David, David's head, and had, uh, and had him put on his armor. David's 
strapped on his, on, on, on his sword, or uh, probably David strapped his sword on over the military clothes and tried to walk, but he had, it was no use for him. He said, I can't walk in these, David said to Saul. I'm, it's, I'm not uh, used to them. So David took them off. So David goes in, first he's going to, Saul says, well, Saul, a grown man, you can think, and uh, um, put, says, here, you take all my armor, all my helmet, I can see, you know, I put on this huge hat and just swimming in it, you know, and, and this armor that's maybe bent down to his knees. I, uh, it's sort of like what I, I now I have, I put on my um, uh, jacket for, for Lena's wedding, when after I lost weight, and it was, it was like this, you know, I had my hands put swimming in it, and I, you know, I looked like I was wearing my father's clothes. Well, this is what David's doing. He's putting on, it's like he's wearing his father's uniform, his father's armor and stuff, and it's too big for him, and, it, and it's just over oversized, and it's just no good to him. He can't even walk in it. So just get that picture in your mind. So, we go on, and it says, David said to Saul, it's not any use, not, I'm, I'm not used to them, so David took them off. Instead, he took his staff in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones, from the wadi and put them in a pouch, in the pouch, in the shepherd's bag. Then with the sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. So David took what God had given him, what God had provided for him in the past, what he understood, and he said, I'm going to go out to meet this guy. I'm going out to meet this nine foot crazy man. I'm going to go out to meet this nine foot monster. I'm going to go out and meet this challenge uh, to, to the people of Israel. I'm going to go out and with the faith of God, and I'm going to go and make, take action against what this guy's doing. And as he, the Philistine came closer and closer to David with a shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine walked, or looked at and saw David, he despised him because he saw he was just a youth. Healthy and handsome, he said to David, I am, a dog, am I a dog that you come against me with, with sticks? Then he cursed David by his gods. Come here, the Philistine called David, and I'll give you, I'll, I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the, and the wild beasts. Now I, I believe this is interesting because David is listening to all this, and listen what David said to the Philistine. You come against me with a dagger, a spear, and sword, but I come against you with, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel's armies. You have been you you have defied him today. The Lord will hand you over to you, hand you over to me. Today I will strike you down, cut off your head, and give you give your corpse to the, of the of the, and give give the corpses of the Philistines camp to the birds of the sky, the creatures of the earth. Then all the world will know that Israel has a, has a God, and the whole assembly will know that it is not by the sword or by the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will hand you over to us. Here, what he's saying to here, people, is that God is not, is, is, you're not coming up against me, he's telling this giant. You're coming up against Almighty God. You're not coming up, you're not fighting against, against the people of Israel. You're fighting against the Lord. You're fighting against Almighty God. You're coming up against Him. So as we come up against these God-sized challenges, and we have God-sized faith, when we go to action, we're not, it's not us that is working, and we're going in as ambassadors. Men uh, and women serving Almighty God. So when you go out and you go to witness with somebody, when you go out and you go to tell of your faith, when you go to tell your family and your friends about who you believe in, it's not it's not you that they're going to meet. They're going they're going to come up and encounter Almighty God. So you know what I, what I believe it, it shows us is that we don't have to worry that we're going to fail. It's God that is, that is doing the work. You understand? The, see the, the slight difference? When we go by ourselves and we do, think we're doing it ourselves, then we, then we, then, then, then you know, it's, we don't have the same club. But when it's God, that is going, it changes the whole picture, doesn't it? When the Philistines started forward to, to attack him, David ran quickly to the battle line meet the Philistines. So David didn't, didn't just sit back and wait. He went forward. He ran at the sky. He met the challenge face to face. And David put his hand in the bag, took out, out a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine on, the forehead, on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and, and he fell to, on his face to the ground. David defeated 
the Philistine with, the, with a sling, and they ate one stone, a stone. Even though David had no sword, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He grabbed the Philistine's sword, pulled it from its sheath, and used it to kill him. Then he cut off his head. When the Philistines saw this, when they saw their, their hero was dead, they ran. And if you go on to the story, we see that the Israelites chased them down, and they, and they win the battle. You see, when we go with God, whatever challenge we're faced with, if we have faith in Almighty God, whatever challenge we're faced with, when we take action, whatever challenge we're faced with, if we go with God, we will be victorious. I promise you. Now, you may not always have the result that you anticipated. You may not even have the result that you hoped for. But if we, if we look at how it is when we, when we trust God and we follow God, whatever the results may be, when we go with Him, we're victorious. We win the battle. The battle is ours. With God on our side, I believe there is nothing that we cannot do. With God at our side, there is no giants that you cannot slay. With God at your side, there is nothing that is, too, that is big, too big for you. Don't give us your excuses. I'm too busy. I'm too little. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too small. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough background. I don't have enough lessons. I don't have enough Bible study or Bible time. I don't have enough knowledge about the scriptures. It's time to put your full trust in God. Stand up against the giants of this world. It's time to say, I'll trust in God, in my God. It's time to stop worrying about who might be offended and stand up for your faith. You see, David wasn't worried about what that, what that Philistine thought of him. He didn't care that when he, when he came up and met him in the middle of the battlefield, he didn't care that that Philistine cursed him and, and said that I'm going to feed your bones to the, to the birds. He didn't care that he was going to, what, what he said about him, he didn't, he didn't, it didn't matter to David. It's time to stop worrying about those things. David stood up against this one who defied his God. Will you stand up and proclaim that you have a God that is greater than the gods of this world? We have a God-sized challenge ahead of us. That is to reach this world with Christ. And it's going to take God-sized faith, and that is to, to trust God that He'll protect you. And it's going to take God-sized action, that is that we need to stand up to the giants of this, in this world. And say that, that you, that they are nothing. Your faith is nothing, and your faith, their faith is nothing. Your faith, their faith, in their God is nothing. And they're not going to be able to crush you. We must believe that God will give us the victory as He did David, a godly man. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see a couple other men just like this. And I look forward in a couple of weeks looking at the man Gideon because you'll see how this works too even further. But we also need to realize that we need to just totally turn our, 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 these things over in our lives. It's time to stand up and be counted. And not stand on the side. It's time to take courage and be willing to do what God would have.